maybe some history to be made, Jeff. How many butterflies do you think are in that number seven's belly right now? Wow, this is it. This is the final moto. He wants to get this start. He needs to stay focused as he has all season, grab a great hole shot, make no mistakes on his way to 24-0. Jimmy Albertson has the opportunity to make some good news here this weekend too. He's Teddy by with Aaron. You're taking a look at the number 702 of Jimmy Albertson, who was supposed to make his debut ride on the factory Red Bull Honda at Millville, but a crash one week prior to that prevented that from happening. He dislocated his right shoulder, and since then he's only had a half an hour on the bike. He said he is feeling pretty good. He is still really sore, and he wants to come out and show the fans and the crowd that he deserves this factory ride. Good luck to the 702 who just finished seventh in that first photo, Jimmy Albertson. Yeah, he had a great start in Moto 1 and a 7th for the final. Let's see if he can beat that. And it's all about 7th for this final Moto here. Gate ready to drop and we're underway. Oh, he Stewart. doesn't get the whole shot. James Stewart gets buried back about four bikes. Jimmy Albertson, who we were just talking about, grabs the whole shot. Hepler, Michael Byrne, and Stewart in fourth. There you see Stewart on the outside, trying to hang on to third. He's got that. That battle for second in the points, Tim Ferry's about 10, did not see Andrew Short. Hepler rides in fourth. Hepler trying to get inside, but not trying to be too aggressive to knock down the reigning champ. So Michael Byrne on the rock star Makita Suzuki with a good start. He was fourth the first photo. Up until Southwick, he was in that battle for second in the points championship. Just had a horrible race at Southwick. Now here at Steel City in the final round, put on a good showing. Well, Albertson and Byrne definitely know that behind them somewhere is this guy, James Stewart. And they know he's coming, Jeff. And you gotta be aware, whoa, look at the rear end dancing around on Stewart's Kawasaki. Looks like he's gotten around Burn. All right, now he's got to get Albertson. For a guy who has led everyone except for 13 laps this year. Stewart knows he's the fastest guy out there. He's got Albertson. Looks like he's going to lead a few more before the year's over. Well, when you talk about having a perfect season, it's about getting perfect starts and doing everything perfect. Stewart here now grabs the lead. On the first lap of Moto2, there's going to be a heck of a race behind him, and now Stewart is in the position. It's all up to him at this point. No mistakes. Keep focused. Keep racing ahead. He even mentioned in his comments after the first Moto that this track was kind of tough to, to make up a lot of time. So he's worried about the riders behind him right now. He knows that he has to put in the perfect Moto here, and he will have a perfect season. It's got to be a lot more comfortable being in the lead, knowing it's in your control. Most definitely. Getting out there to the start, he was fourth, but does anything can happen when those riders aren't in front of you. Now it really is up to him to work his way through any lap drivers that come his way and any obstacles that the track throws at him. Later in the day, How's that going to affect the track conditions? Well, the track looks like it's in really good condition right now. They've worked the track a little bit with the, with the disc and everything, but the track's very flat, very easy. It'll be easy to slide out with the loose traction here. Oh, Hepler right at the inside on Michael Byrne. Byrne back to the inside on Hepler. He makes a pass back. Oh, it really pinches him off on this double-double uphill. Heckler back to the outside. He's going to the inside. Doesn't look like he's going to get the chance there, though. Burned a little too strong in that section. But look at Heckler with the drive around the outside. Powers up the hill. The Yamaha goes back in front of the Suzuki. Great action here in the final moto of the AMA Motocross Championship. Well, you know, we watched Hepler at Southwick, Jeff. He started off good, but physically just wasn't there yet. Way better this week. Well, his confidence will grow with each and every good finish that he has here as he's really putting the pressure on Jimmy Albertson, who's riding that Red Bull Honda for the first time. Albertson, a great starter, really has put himself in the position to get some top tens here today. Let's see if he has it for the second moto as Brock Epler really applies the pressure. This is a downhill 
off camber as the riders trying to keep the bike to their left to have a nice apex here for the Oh, look at that, Epler for the right, right up to the inside there as we go back to the replay in the whole shot. You see as they come across the line, it was close between Epler Byrne, but it was Jimmy Albertson on the Honda taking the final whole shot award of the year. Tim Ferry on the Monster Kawasaki battling the KTM of Matt Gerke. And Ferry on his way to if he can hang in, in this position, Jeff. Looks like second in the championship. That is a tremendous ride because even though James Stewart really has been dominant this season, the battle for second and the amount of riders that were on the podium and were challenging for those positions all season, that, I mean, that was that was an epic battle here. Now in the final race, it's the veteran Tim Ferry who's rising to the occasion. Putting another Kawasaki up there, so it's be Kawasaki 1-2 for the for the championship, and Barry can close it out. Well, what a what a year for the riders in green this season. Ryan Villapoto takes the Motocross Lights Championship. James Stewart takes the Motocross title. Looks like Tim Perry's going to take second. Stewart on his way to sweeping a perfect year, and it looks like Stewart will also win Monster Energy Triple Crown of Motocross. Put it up there to win it. Now it's lucky, guys. Pretty much taking care of it this year. We'll be right back. Still soon. Thursday. James Stewart on his way to trying to do something that only Ricky Carmichael has been able to do in the history of motocross. Have a perfect season. Win every moto. Michael Byrne sits in third. Tim Perry behind him in fourth. Well, you have to think for Stewart that all those epic battles and the defeats that he had against Ricky Carmichael that he, that he learned something along the way and that he's now applied that intensity and what he, he learned from the greatest of all time Ricky Carmichael uh, it was what helped him be so dominant this season. Of course you have something in common with Ricky Carmichael here. You and Ricky and Kevin Windham the only riders to have won here at Steel City in both classes. Yeah it looks like Stewart's going to join the list here. Look at the battle between Tim Ferry and Michael Byrne, Ferry up the inside, takes the position. Now the burner trying to sweep it back around the outside. This track really lends itself to that inside, outside, back to the inside type battles. It's an epic track design. Different track though this year, different layout. About 50% of it is different, and the preparation was different, and it really has been great for the riders. Mark Peters, man, who was brought in to help configure the racetrack up a little bit differently this year. And a lot of folks liking it. I always love racing here. This was just a, just a great facility. Well, Tim Ferry said he's maybe, always run well here. Maybe because it was the last race of the year, and he knew that the madness would be over for a while. This motocross just so grueling. As Josh Hill, just in front of Jimmy Albertson, finding out as they finish up the season here. Both riders have been on the ground one time or another. This championship, it's hard on the bottom. Well, this race hasn't always been the last race of the year. No, it was a couple, a couple uh, third from the end for a few years. Back in my day, it was pretty much. But it's back to the end of it here just this exactly. year. Yeah, yeah, and it's a great place to end uh, just a tremendous championship here. Nobody <laughs> in the United States, I think, is looking forward to the end of a championship anymore than James Stewart. He is so close now, just laps away from having the perfect season. Jeff, where does he go from here? I mean, he's, he's won everything there is to win now. Is he just a full-on attack on the record book? Is that what he uses as his focus from this point on? Because winning the motocross championship was something he had never done. A perfect motocross season, something he had never done. He's got so scratched off him. Yeah, well, then all of your uh, your teams, your sponsors, and everybody expect you to do it again, or even thrice. Well done. We'll see if James Stewart can do that. Tim Ferry sitting in third, trying to find his way around Hepler. We're coming right back, Steel City. You're going to see some history made here today on speed. 
James Stewart trying to become only the second rider in the history of motocross to have a perfect season. So far, there have been 23 motos, and he's won them all. This is the last one for 2008. Well, in the last race here, Hepler and Kim Ferrier saving the best for last. They have been locked up together. These riders have been like Velcro. Keep putting it together, and they stick, and then they pull it back apart. They did that in the first moto. Now here in the second moto, they're doing the same thing, and it's Ferry finding a line on the inside of Hepler. Well, one of the things Brock Hepler said on the podium to Aaron Baines was that he had the opportunity, that they both had the opportunity to see each other's lines. What do you think they've learned? Well, they've learned where each rider's fast and not, and then they, they try to correct that, and each rider keeps up and ante. That's a line Hepler's not going to want to take again. Nice uh, blast of dust there for the fans up on top of the sweeper there into what used to be called the pro section. Well, the other thing you got to do if you want to beat Tim Ferry, he's got to be in great shape because as the race goes on, he tends to get strong. Well, and Hepler needs to worry about what's just behind him, Michael Byrne was fourth in the first moto, now he's fourth in this moto. You see him at the top of your screen. All three of these riders have been pretty close all day, but the battle really has been between the 15 and the 60. And Matt Gerke having problems with the MDK KTM. Fifth at Southwick for a while, then went out. How frustrating is that? Too. Yeah. Wow. Had a really he, good ride at Southwick. He really has been on fire here once he jumped up to the big bike in the lights class. You know, you would think the lead would be bigger than this for James Stewart. He's not really anything he can relax over. As you said, Jeff, he made the statement this isn't a track where he can really just gap people huge. Well, and, and remember, Stewart's trying to ride in a very conservative, safe manner. He's, he, he wants to win the race. That's the last thing in line to have the perfect season. Meanwhile, you got Tim Ferry and Brock Hepler who are just throwing down the gauntlet at this point. They drop the gloves just going after it. They're not giving up at all, so that's what's closing up that gap. Stewart's just wishing these riders would just kind of fade away and he can cruise around, but it's not easy to go 24-0, and Tim Ferry and Brock Hepler are keeping the pressure on, making James Stewart earn it. Incidentally, James Stewart could go into uh, a tie for fifth all time in the motocross wins list with myself, and it's looking like we're gonna be tied at the end of the season. Welcome back to Steel City. We talked about it at the beginning of the season because he is without question the fastest man in motocross, James Stewart. We thought could potentially pull off a perfect season, win every moto. Two lap sign just came out. He knows he's two laps away from doing it perfect season of 24 or 24. But Jeff, James went and talked about it. He said, I want to do something I've never done before first, and that's win the motocross championship. When he wrapped that up, focus started to shift. Shifted towards having the 24 and 0 season. And you remember back that interview from, from uh, Southwick, Stewart, he was happy just to make the opening photo at Glenham. He didn't think that he would be able to do that because of the knee injury. So once he made it to Glen Helen and found out that he could ride, he said that, that was like that was like a win right there. And then it started to escalate. You went one, two, three, four in a row. Already at the beginning of the season, we were talking about the perfect season. James didn't want to talk about it, focused on the championship, and now here we are, the final race. Stewart's about ready to complete the whole year. Going perfect. Well, James has made a lot of history throughout his career. As you said, he's about to move up to fifth in the all-time wins category, tied with you. He became the first rider in history to win all five classes in motocross and supercross. Of course, that's the modern era. The 500 bike's not out here anymore. They'll be tied with you with 16 victories. No offense to you, but my guess is he's going to move past you here Probably sooner than later. Chance, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, how far can this young man go? Sky's the limit for James Stewart. 
He is on a program now, and he's as focused and serious as what I've ever seen. You know, Stewart came in with, uh, as we go into the final lap, as the fastest amateur we had ever seen. He, uh, he was just so amazing at the actual speed that he had, you know, decimated all the, just destroyed all of the lights, records, won championships in Supercross and Motocross. Then he ran into Ricky Carmichael here in the Motocross class, but Ricky's gone. Stewart has matured, and he's, there's no reason that he can't continue on this pace for a number of years and shatter all the other records. It's going to be interesting to see what Ryan Villapoto can do as he moves up next year to the big bikes. See if in any way, shape, or form he can slow down James Stewart. Because right now, there doesn't seem to be anybody who can. Yeah. And what we've seen is James Stewart, this rider's made more money in the sport at this point than anybody else at this point of, of their career. So I think he's been through a maturing process, a, a growing process, to where that now it's really about finishing the career here, focusing on the end of it. And how do I want my legacy to be? And his career with Kawasaki is coming to an end as well as he's shifting teams next season. Yeah, that, that's a big thing. Nobody's really talked about that too much, especially at Kawasaki. They've been focused on the job at hand, and that's having the perfect season. And uh, But this will be the end of the era with James Stewart and Kawasaki as he moves on to L&M Racing. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays into it. It's been a great uh, run for James under the leadership of Mike Fisher and the Monster Energy Kawasaki team. Well, and it really goes all the way back to Kawasaki's amateur program, yep. Kawasaki Team Green, which was so instrumental in giving Stewart and his family the tools that it takes to develop, to cultivate a rider's talent and to bring them up to this. All the, this goes all the way back to 1993 with Team Green. And now, this is how they finish up their relationship together is with a perfect season. I'm sure the head guys at Team Green couldn't have asked for any more. Well, in 2007, he claimed the Supercross Championship. In 2008, the motocross title. He's going to win the Monster Energy Triple Crown of Motocross. And now there it is. History has been made here at Steel City. A perfect 24 motos and 24 wins. The legend continues to grow. James Stewart has done it. We'll be back to talk to him. Speech coverage for the AMA Toyota Motocross Championship from Delmont, Pennsylvania is brought to you by Suzuki. Maker performance driven motorcycles, scooters, and all terrain vehicles. And by the full size Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. Pink's all out Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 Pacific, Thursday night. Pink's All Out is all new. Over 400 drag racers line up in front of a record crowd of over 30,000 spectators for their one shot at bragging rights and 10 grand in cold hard cash. Pink's All Out, Thursday night, 9 Eastern, only on speed. All right, what's this one say? Undefeated, you betcha. 24 for 24. Ricky Carmichael did it twice. James Stewart has now added his name to that part of history as well. Well, we'll take a look at the unofficial revolts Results from Moto2. Once again, James Stewart on top, and Skinner grabs the last point. Here's Aaron with Brock Kepler. Brock, after a long hiatus coming back, you really didn't know where you were going to stand amongst your competitors. How do you feel you're fair? And being up on the podium, what does this do for your confidence for next year? Well, I mean, it definitely gave me some confidence. You know, the first two races weren't so good, but, uh, you know, when I get on some familiar dirt and, you know, get my speed back up, it. Uh, showed what I'm capable of next year. Congratulations on hanging it all out. A very solid performance by Brock Kepler and a bit of a bright spot for Yamaha in what has not been a very good motocross season. Well, here's Tim Ferry. He's going to claim second in the championship. He's with Aaron. As a veteran rider, what do you have to say to some of the young kids that are complaining of fitness, endurance? You're 34 and you're managing it no problem. 33. <laughs> Almost 34. Um, you know, I, I just work real hard. I train and uh, I take it serious. I, like, you know, I, I love what I do and, uh, you know, I, I don't want to ever see the end come. So uh, I'll keep working hard and uh, Cowie's giving me good opportunities and uh, can be happy. Congratulations on a very successful season. Take a look at this point standings. There's something there you won't see very often. 
600 at the top of the board, a perfect season. Here's James with Aaron. Well, he did what nobody thought was possible to do after we saw the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael, do it. But James, a championship today, the perfect season. Sum the season up in your words. Unbelievable. You know, uh, like I said, you know, only having a couple weeks to prepare for the season, I mean, nobody thought. I mean, even myself, you know, we never thought this. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to get through the season healthy. To go undefeated and all that, you know, it's, it's crazy. Right, to go undefeated, not only yourself, but you managed to do that, but you've got a lot of help behind you. Your mechanic, Michael Williamson, right beside him this whole way. Not only is it physical, but mechanical as well. Two minutes and 20 seconds was an average lap. How long was that last lap for you? You know what? This was, I don't even remember the championship because this day was long. It just seemed like, you know, he, he, he just cruised and made it close at the end. So I was getting nervous. I was like, man, this isn't good. But, uh. I knew he had it in control, and it's, it's incredible just what he did this summer. Congratulations to both of you. James, right now your contract is for a Supercross-only contract for next season. Is this going to be the last outdoor national that we see you race at? I don't know. No, we'll see. You know, it's a lot of changes going to be going on, and uh, I'm excited about the plans. You know, I think they're going to be good, and uh, once we'll be able to, you know, sit down and talk to everybody about it, it'll be good. So, you know, we'll see. Congratulations. Not only undefeated, the champion, James Stewart. We're going to see a lot more of that million-dollar smile, I guarantee it. Yeah, for James Stewart, he had to focus. He had to, with the knee injury, he really had to get it together, and that effort, that type of determination helped propel him to the perfect season. I'm just